Hey Salem, welcome again to Sermon Prep. This is a chance where I get to interview some of my mentors, leaders, influencers in the body of Christ, in the church, who I respect. And I get to ask them serious questions about my sermon series. The sermon series I have coming up is gonna be called Youth Revolt. And who better could I get but Clary Butler. I met him first at Trinity, uh, Trinity International University over at, with Ted's, and he was there on the campus serving the undergrad and serving the campus by being a multicultural director, all about diversity, all about justice issues, all about caring for those who might be left out in some of our institutions. Those are just some things on his rap sheet. He got a long rap sheet, but Clary, say what's up to the people. Hey, what's up, everyone? <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it is uh, exciting to be a part of what you're doing. I'm, yes. I've been checking you out, and uh, I just want you to press on with all of the innovation and the excitement that you're bringing to what you're doing. So thanks again for having me. No, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Hey, man, I'm going to take some notes on this iPad that I'm holding on to. This is my preaching pad. But my first question, if it's okay, we can just hop right Let's into in. it. Yeah. My first question is, where have you been mentally and spiritually in the midst of this current revolution that's happening in the streets for Black Lives Matter? And that's also happening right here in our churches. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I've been all over the place. <laughs> so as heartbreaking and heart aching as the pandemic has been as yes. far as a uh, the greatest health crisis of our lifetime, yeah. uh, the greatest social crisis of the lifetime and the generation that we're talking about and that we're serving yes. has been what's going on right now. And some people will say that it has been sparked by George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or Rayshard Brooks, et cetera. But really, this is just more of the same in a 200 plus year history of what's been going on in America. So I have been all over the place trying to help out and make a contribution wherever I can. Okay, I'm gonna hit you with a blitz too. Let's go. Cause I love that and I love where you're going. You named someone Breonna Taylor. Just this morning, they were down south. What city are they in? Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, yeah, Louisville, right? Kentucky, yeah. I saw Common getting up, rapper Common. And they're calling attention to the situation with Breonna Taylor. Not that you have to speak specifically on the case, but what is it about this movement that's happening with young black women that they're trying to bring attention to that situation. Yeah, a lot of people will think that it's the, the black men that have been disproportionately affected, and that is true, particularly as it relates to jail. But yes. uh, we cannot leave out our black females, black and brown females, because there is a disproportionate effect that has been happening, whether it's uh, health, whether it's criminal justice, whether it's the opportunity to be in the boardroom, because this fight has to be fought in many different arenas. Yeah. And so our black and brown women have been disproportionately affected, and we are now seeing that, even as it relates to someone like Breonna Taylor, who was just in a home, doing what we all do in a home, watching television, resting, chilling out. And all of a sudden, her life changes because of a policy that has produced systematic racism. Now, we got some young viewers, um, and you use some pretty big words, This, which I want you to use. Because when I talk to the teenagers at Salem, they're brilliant. So I don't ever dumb down my talk. For sure. But how can we connect it? What message about that? connects with a teenager on the south side of Chicago about their safety and about justice? Well, uh, the first thing they have to know is that they're, they're in this fight whether they want to be or not. Uh, I can assure you that, uh, you know, I'm just kind of pontificating a little bit, but Please. I can almost assure you that Rayshard Brooks, on the day that he lost his life, did not think that that was going to be his last Absolutely. day on earth. He didn't think that he would be seized by a moment and all of a sudden tens of thousands of people all over the world would be marching for justice using his name. Yes. I can almost assure you, again, I'm pontificating a little bit, but I can Please. almost assure you that George Floyd did not know yeah. that the day that he lost his life, when he said, I cannot breathe, he was moments away mm -hmm. from breathing his last breath and that all over the world, from Germany to London to Italy to the United States, people would be marching mm -hmm using his name for social justice. So the first thing that they have to understand is we're all in this fight. We may yes. not know exactly where our place is gonna be, but we're all in this. Yes. And so it behooves us to find our place so that we can make a significant contribution. Absolutely. Um, for a young black teenager, 
um, they are in the fight because many times the color of their skin. Um, they did not know that they might lose their life that day and that life could be so fragile and short. Rashad Brooks and George Floyd, both of them, it was a lot of conversation about what they had done or what they were doing that might have been right or wrong. Sure. You are a lawyer, uh, which means that you are called to advocate and to defend people until they get due process. Sure. And so for a young person who maybe doesn't know all of their legal rights, and I don't want you to have a legal conversation, but what confidence can they have about moving through life and saying that, okay, I'm not a perfect person, but I still should be fighting for justice? Well, here's the problem. Um, I was taught and I still believe that if an officer pulls you over, whether I'm in a car or if I'm walking down the street, then I need to listen to the officer. That officer is a public servant and I owe them the respect to adhere to what they're asking me to do so that there would be safety for the public. That's good. So that's how I was raised. That's still how I believe. That's good. But you tell me, am I supposed to submit like George Floyd? Or am I supposed to run for my life like Rayshard Brooks? Absolutely. They both ended up with the same consequence. And so that's why we're marching. That's why we're fighting for justice and trying to figure things out because it doesn't matter if you submit or if you fight. We're ending up with the same plight. So we've got to do something here. Yes, we got to do something. Pastor Meeks uh, is one of the foremost leaders at this moment. Absolutely. I just marched with him back on Juneteenth just about a week ago. Yeah. And we were marching with the governor, Governor Prisker and many other people. Yeah. And he advocates, our church advocates all the time, but we want to raise up a young group of people, sure. the next generation to continue that advocacy. Yeah. What are some encouraging words you can give to a teenager, a young adult, a college student who's from Salem, sure. who's all about justice, but maybe hasn't come into their own yeah. about walking in that confidence and advocating for justice? Because you advocate for justice and not just in black circles on the South side, or in Chicago, you advocate for justice in white evangelical spaces. Sure. You advocate for justice in diverse spaces and in community spaces. What encouragement could you give to young people, especially in, at the end, tied in with church? Sure, so <laughs> I encourage you first to educate yourself. You can't speak to what you don't know. Yeah. Someone asks you a question, well, what about all lives matter? Don't all lives matter? Well, you have to be able to be educated enough to know that all lives can't matter until black lives matter. And you've got to be able to have an educated conversation. So first, educate yourself. And that's the first encouragement that I have to, uh, particularly to young people. The second thing is, listen to those that have come before us. Even if you don't agree with everything that they may have done or their tactics, their approach, listen. There's a lot that we can learn from the Jesse Jacksons of the world and the Al Sharptons of the world and uh, Henry Louis Gates and all of these different uh, mentors and patriarchs. There's so much we can learn from the Oprah Winfrey's and the Michelle Obama's, yeah. etc. because they've been doing this for generations mm -hmm. and they're still in it. Yeah. And then the third thing that I would encourage our young folks to do is to find your place mm -hmm. and you know, I, I use a scripture out of Corinthians where uh, Paul admonishes us that we all have spiritual gifts. We all have these things that we have been endowed by the Holy Spirit in order to benefit the church and the community. And so understand your spiritual gift and then get into the fight. I've got one quick example if we've got a second for no, an example. plenty of time. So uh, late 2000s, yeah. I was actually a teacher at uh, an instructor at Purdue University and we had a Bible class and I planted a, a church there. And uh, we had a couple hundred students that would come over time. And, and I did that actually for 12 years at Purdue University. Well, we had one uh, student that she just, she just was on fire. She was a part of our leadership and et cetera, et cetera. And she was just doing some phenomenal things. Good. Fast forward to 2020 yeah. and that student, her name was Ashley. She actually is the one who organized the March wow. on Juneteenth. And so you've wow. got to find your place. <laughs> good. You have to find your place. She found her place. Kudos to her, but whether it's organizing marches, whether it's being online, because the fight is online as well, Correct. whether it's being in the boardroom, or whether it's having your own family directly affected, find your place. That's yes. what I would encourage. Yeah.
That's amazing. That's amazing testimony too. I love how the younger generation is just changing the world at this moment. Uh, and for you, um, working in uh, institutions where you were the minority, working in churches where you were the minority, uh, working in a space here in America, we can be the minority, uh, but you are an example, my sir, of black excellence. Well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> nice. And um, likewise. Uh, to communicate, though, with some young people, um, there's going to be resistance that comes back when you're in some of these spaces. Sometimes it's not easy. You're not understood. And uh, maybe what you're communicating, has you have to take extra time to communicate or you have to work extra hard to be considered. Um, what encouraging words do you have for young people? Because my, my hope is that Salem raises up a revolutionary group of next generation kids that are going out into the world, into spaces that are unfamiliar, taking the gospel, taking justice, taking excellence with them and making the world a better place. What encouragement could you have for kids who might enc encounter that, yeah, uh, that resistance? Yeah, yeah. Um, here's, here's probably the first thing that I would say to that. Um, I had a situation where uh, there was a, a gentleman that I had the privilege of being able to baptize his niece. Um, when his mother died, I was called and I was the minister around the family's bedside. This is an older white gentleman, conservative, yes. Trump supporter. Yes. And I was called to be around the bedside of his family mm -hmm. as his mother was tr making her transition into the next reality. We held hands and sung songs and uh, not long after that she did make her transition. I was the one that was at the funeral, et cetera, et cetera. When George Floyd died, I asked this man who I had been a part of his life and remained a part of his life, do you believe black lives matter? He would not say the words. Now again, I am the one who had been at the bedside for his mother as a minister of the gospel at that time. Yes. And he would not even say to me that he believed my life mattered because of the color of my skin. You know, they went through the rhetoric of all lives matter. And all I want to say to the young folks today is if you encounter that type of resistance, that it just literally breaks your heart. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you may have to pull back a little bit. You may have to create some boundaries so that you can stay healthy and stay in the fight. But remember the words of the Bible, he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hang in there. The battle is not ours. Believe it or not, this battle is the Lord's. Last thing, last thing. I'm, of course, entering these into my notes, into my message. I'm all about the revolt, the uprising that's happening. I think that God is using this moment to do powerful things in yep. this nation. Yep. And if we take the opportunity to get involved in what God's doing, we can have some sustainable, incredible change. We got cameras here. We got two cameras on purpose. Speak right into the camera. Sure. Sure. First part of speaking right into the camera, if you could address the nation, mm -hmm. if you could address the nation of Salem, if you could address the nation of even the white evangelical church, what words can you have about God's heart and justice for them? And then the second thing, encourage my young people, man. For sure, we will do. Well, the first thing I would say is again, thank you for uh, allowing me to, to share a few words from what I have learned and what I am learning. Uh, and then I would just say to anybody who's a part of this or desires to be a part of this, the first thing is things are going to have to be a little bit tactical. This is a marathon and it's not a sprint. In other words, we're not just going to participate in one march and think that all of a sudden if we get a policy change or uh, if uh, some policemen are brought to justice that all of a sudden it's over. The minute you step into a fight for social justice, particularly as it relates to racism and humanitarianism, it's forever. That fight does not end until we breathe our last breath. It ends at death. So that's the first thing that I want to suggest. But then even to young folks, I don't know positive adjectives as it relates to racism. It has been called a disease, a cancer, a sin, its own virus, and all of those things are true. And I used to think we could not eradicate racism, but I now believe we absolutely can. And so how on earth, with nearly 7 billion people, can you eradicate racism? And you eradicate it 
I think in three ways. Number one, you eradicate it by eliminating it from the hearts of people one person at a time. Secondly, you eradicate racism from eliminating it from systems one policy at a time. Mm. And then finally, you eradicate racism by realizing this is a marathon mm. and it's gonna take the rest of our lives. So hang on in there. That's powerful. Thank you. That's powerful. And those are practical steps that we can take back to get us involved in justice. Um, this is sermon prep. And it's not just for me. If you're actually listening, these messages are things that you can take back to include in your daily life to help you change other people and to change the world around you. God has called us on a mission, on a mission to go out and to fulfill his gospel work. And the only way we do that is by making sure we continue to learn, like he said, and by seeing beautiful models like this of people out leading in the fight for justice and inclusion, even within our churches, and also by just getting involved. Make sure you follow us on our Facebook page, SBCOC Youth Ministry. Make sure you share this, this incredible video with your youth, with your young adults, and make sure you also download our Salem app, Salem Baptist Church, and you can go ahead and buy a t-shirt and help support our young adult and youth ministry here at Salem. We appreciate you checking in. We'll see you soon.